Hey guys, hi. So in this video, we'll be talking about standard template library in C++ or STL as we commonly know about it. Uh, STL is, is one of the most powerful libraries which are present in C++ and it's nothing. It's generally a set of data structure and algorithm which we use in our day-to-day -day codes or programs. And it has packaged all those containers or all those algorithm data structures into various containers, right? So we are going to see a lot of containers as well as a lot of implementations here. So set of data structure and algorithm which we generally use in day to day life right. So STL if we talk about STL, STL is generally uh, like broke up into three different pieces. The first piece is around containers which is the primary unit for keeping all the data and how we arrange the data inside containers. The second primary piece is going to be iterators and the third one is going to be our algorithm. So the algorithms are generally those fixed kind of algorithm which we can implement over these containers and uh, more or less all of these algorithms will be agnostic of the container type, right? So before we uh, like discuss more about the other two words, let's directly jump up on containers. Okay, so container in very simple terms, container is generally something which stores data and objects. Okay, a very simple way of explaining container just like in C, in C language, I believe most of you have written a code in C so far. In C language, we have an array, right? So in C, we have array as the only container which is present inside the entire language. But in C++, we have different kind of container like we have vector, we have dq, we have list, we have a map, we have a set, etc, etc. We have a lot of different containers, right? So let's look at some of the properties of a container which like which we actually expect from a from a container actually. So what are the kind of property which we actually look in whenever we define a container right. The first kind of property should be we should be able to add a value. Right the second kind of property would be we need to remove an element remove a value. The third property would be we need to check if the value is present or not. The fourth kind of property could be the size, right? We need to return the size of the container. And the fifth kind of property is should be we need we should be able to iterate through the container. Okay, so think of container as nothing. It's just a data pipeline, a, a fixed data size, which or like could be dynamic as well, to which in which we are actually storing the data. Now the way we are storing the data and the way we are actually optimizing the memory will differ in different different containers and that's what we are going to check out in the next few sessions right now if you see all of these properties should be followed by a single container but now you will say okay we also have array what is wrong with array right array can also fulfill some of these properties yes we can actually implement array in a more sophisticated manner and then it will provide us all these properties but then what's the use right we need to implement array Let's suppose if I want to implement one of these properties, I'll probably uh, implement array as a map and then I do some more sophisticated algorithm on top of it. So then we can actually implement these, these kind of containers as well. But in C++, we don't have to implement any of them because most of the containers which are having these kind of properties are already implemented in C++. Right now, if we have a, diff a kind of container which is actually following all these properties, let's suppose I have an integer which I am actually keeping inside this container. So add a value, remove an integer, check if integer is present, re like return the size of the container, I iterate through all the integer values. The basic definition of a container here is it will be agnostic of the data type which you are storing in it, right? So in a container, if I am storing a integer, I am storing a character, I am storing a string, whatever. I can store all kinds of data types here, right? So the container is going to be agnostic of the kind of data type we are storing in it. And that's the basic inspiration behind bringing STL, right? This thing should be agnostic of data type, which we are storing in it, right? 
and that's the inspiration of defining a library which can be used in almost every kind of data type and which will have a different kind of sequencing which will have a different kind of implementation different kind of memory optimization and so on and all of these container will actually resemble to some kind of real data structure right so most of these con container when we discuss them you will see they all resemble some kind of real data structure right and that's the inspiration behind defining and bringing this term container right now to define a container let's suppose if i want to define a stack uh, we all know stack is a kind of container and let's suppose if i want to include stack in my code what i can do i can include the library of stack right that, that's the most formal way in which we can do it and then we also need to do something as include the namespace Now this is very interesting right we we have seen this multiple number of time i believe most of you who are coding c++ already have seen this thing using namespace stds std and instead of this tag we actually in include a global library bit standard c++ right but what actually is this line what actually is this line so namespace here namespace actually corresponds to it actually allows different kind of entities and it is actually created and packaged all different kind of entities within itself right namespace is nothing it's just something which allows entities like your classes it could be your objects could be your functions it actually allows them under single group or single code and group under one name so what i'm saying is namespace is nothing namespace is just a collection of different kind of classes different kind of objects different kind of functions which we have already written somewhere and now we can actually import them a very simple like explanation of namespace could be i can define a namespace here let's suppose if i define a namespace let's suppose my space although i don't have much space but yeah so i will define an integer variable a here right and then i close out this namespace now how we can access this variable is i have to name it something like this and that's how i can access all the variables or all the functions which are present inside namespace similarly if you see whenever i want to use a stack i need to use something like this sorry not namespace i have to use something like this std and then stack and then i can define a stack here right so this statement to actually not to define these kind of container with this name all the time we use we actually import the namespace here right so standard std is a namespace wherein we have defined all the containers all the containers their implementation and all the functionality of these containers right so names std is the is the namespace which you generally use and this statement imports std into my code right this is kind of a library like we are importing a library whose name is std although it is known as namespace but you can think of it as a library and we are bringing the entire library in my code so that i can use the elements of the library within my code right so using if you see this actually nothing it's just a bypass and um it's more like a it's more like this thing only right it's just thing like it's it's an alternate way of writing this statement so this help me bypass this thing all the time i don't need to write this standard colon colon two times in order to get all my containers right so that, that's the basic definition of namespace and namespace you can also define custom namespace just like this right so that's about namespace and how we can import a container now let's look at the other part which is my functions now before function let's move on to iterators here so let's look at the iterator so iterator is uh, like if, if you see in the first slide we have discussed uh, one of the properties of a of a container should be we need we should be able to iterate through it right so iterators are those objects or are those pointer type things or objects which are used 
in order to iterate through the containers right so using iterator we can actually iterate through multiple containers so think of it as like this like let's suppose this is a very simple container we have vector here so it is more like a pointer type object which helps in accessing the elements right so iterator is something like this it should be pointing towards this and if i need the value the value of this it should be pointer star star iterator right this will dereference the value and it will give me the value right so that's basically the the major functionality of iterator iterator will be different for every particular container we have to define iterator something like if i want to define iterator for a vector we can define it like this i can define it like this although in uh, like i think c plus plus 14 we also have introduced something known as auto iterator right so you just need to write down auto iterator and the compiler will automatically identify which kind of container we are using in order to iterate through it right so that's about iterator now coming to the next part which is the algorithm which we first discussed so algorithms are generally those kind of functions or the algos which will be implemented over all the containers uh very like common example would be a swap function right we can swap the elements of a of a container or would be sort we can sort the values which are present inside container or it could be binary underscore search so we can actually search a particular number within a container so these are kind of algos which can be implemented over container or which are applicable over containers right so that's about algos and iterators and containers uh, now let us see how we actually divide a container because most of the conversation in this topic are going to be around uh, around containers only so containers are generally divided into four parts right so the first one which we see like the type of container which we see is actually sequential containers the second one we see is associative containers the third one which we see are more like adaptive containers and the fourth one are unordered okay so what are sequential containers these are mostly containers which uh, help us uh, like which are mostly linear in and uh, linear in the structure like let's suppose vector uh, list dq string these are uh, like common examples which will fall under sequential container wherein the user controls the order of elements so basically a user is able to control the order of elements right next come is the associative container so associative container are mostly key value pairs kind of thing right so here like one common example would be set map multi set multi map and so on these are kind of containers wherein the container controls the position right now you might be thinking what does this statement mean right so this basically means that all of the elements will have a key and value so all the values which are present inside the associative container will be handled via the key we can only get the values through the key so the container controls the value and these cannot be like this cannot be dereferenced directly we need to iterate through the container in most of the time next comes the adaptive container now, this is an important like thing these are containers which are actually built on top of other containers these are more like wrappers so stack queue your priority queue these are some of the examples which will fall under adaptive container right so these are most of, more or like like more or less built upon uh, vector only so these are wrappers which are built up on top of other containers the fourth thing is unordered container right unordered containers are like unordered map or unordered set and so on so these are containers which are not ordered in nature right? associative container are mostly ordered because they might be like all the values inside associative container will be following some kind of sequence 
in most of the time it will be uh, like sorted in increasing order but unordered on the other end a container wherein the elements will not be ordered in nature like so that's about the high level uh, discussion around the introduction of stl uh, in the next few videos we are going to double click on each of them sequential associative adaptive and unordered containers and see uh, the different functionality and the like the powerfulness of various containers which we use in our day-to-day -day programming thanks